So Jason, we've talked a lot about how automatic shortcuts and heuristics can bias our decisions and lead us to make errors. But what are some of the times when those automatic decisions can actually help us, you know, when they can lead us to the, you know, the right decision? I mean, we're all experts at a lot of things, right? Um, presumably a lot of adults are pretty expert when it comes to reading or riding a bicycle and you don't even recognize it. And that's, that's kind of the interesting thing. We, we all make these kinds of judgments and decisions without real, uh, a whole lot of insight into the basis of those judgments and decisions. This is automatic process that you don't really kind of introspect much about. But for experts, um, it does seem pretty uh, unusual. It seems impressive in a lot of cases. For example, chess expert, uh, they see uh, a chessboard very differently than we do. And in fact, what you can do is take the pieces on a chessboard and scramble them in a, in a particular way and then ask them to remember the, the particular configurations on a chessboard. And they can do it. They, can, they have an incredible memory for chess configurations. Bird experts have incredible memory and uh, discriminations ability when it comes to birds. Mammograms, uh, you have an expert radiologist looking at a mammogram. They can tell whether it's normal or abnormal at in milliseconds. They can just flash it on a screen and they're able to tell whether it's uh, a weird scan or not. So what seems odd um, to us is really just natural to them in the same way that reading or riding a bicycle is to us. So, and these are a result of the sort of heuristics and shortcuts and uh, the structure that, they're, that they've spent countless hours doing. We spend countless hours reading, riding bicycles and so on. They spend countless hours staring at that particular uh, type of stimulus. And that's how it happens. So it seems like that, you know, heuristics or these learned automatic responses are kind of functional generally in that they actually can sometimes represent uh, something good that we've learned something to a high level of expertise. It's just that sometimes the general rule doesn't always apply and we make mistakes occasionally. But there are a lot of experts out there who claim to be experts but actually don't have any real expertise. They think they know what they're doing but in fact when you actually test them, which is why we have the scientific method, when you actually test them to see whether they can actually do what they claim, they kind of fall short. And so it seems to be exposure, yes, but also feedback. You absolutely need to know whether you're right or not at those kinds of judgments and decisions. So given that it can be difficult to know whether we should rely on someone's expertise, um, you know, what are some of the ways we can evaluate um, people's claims of expertise? If you ask somebody whether they can do what they claim, we often feel like we're all better than we actually are. Everyone rates themselves as being a, an above average driver, for example, which can't be the case because it's an average, right? So if I claim to be a wine expert, you don't just take my word for it, you, you need to test me, right? Put me in a circumstance where you know the truth and present the information to me where, I, where you're actually testing whether I can actually do what I claim. We've done a bunch of work, for example, with uh, fingerprint experts. Uh, these, are, these are people, I talk about the way that uh, people spend their days. These are people that look at pairs of prints eight hours a day, every single day of their working days. Uh, and that's all they do. They, they look at prints that match and those that don't, and they have an incredible amount of expertise. But we didn't know whether they could actually do what they claimed or not for a hundred years of them actually testifying in court. We had no idea whether they could actually match prints or not, which is kind of scary. And so you need to do these kinds of experiments to actually kind of probe or prompt that sort of expertise to actually see whether it exists or not. And there's a lot of different areas where people are making these kind of grand claims and we really have no idea whether they can do it or not.